Welcome to another session of Tuesday Teaching Tips. This week, uh, upon request actually, we're going to be looking at teaching Quran to our young children and also some tips on memorization for our young children as well. So the first question we're going to look at is when do I start teaching Quran to my children? So the question really depends on what you mean by the word teaching here. So as you can see, I've added the ages zero to three. Now, what kind of teaching will there be uh, for babies and toddlers. Well, there is so examples of this include uh, your children, your babies, your toddlers will hear you recite Quran inshallah at home, or they might hear the Quran being recited at the masjid, or you can play Quran for them at home as well. There are so here's some of the toys that we've used in the past. We've got this. Um, these two are actually from Dar es Salaam here in Saudi Arabia, and they're possibly available on their website online. I'll have to have a look and post in my blog post. Uh, later. This one I really really like because it's something that you can hang sort of on a on a pram uh, or in a cot and there's a few different buttons and it plays like Surah Fatiha and some of the surahs uh, from Juz Amma, the shorter surahs. From my own experience I found that at the age of three, this is when Amara was three, about nearly two years back now, we actually started teaching her Quran formally. Um, and by doing so, first of all, we had a routine. Start with memorizing first, and we'll touch more on that in, in a moment. And then also prepare them for the session. So, you know, speak to them about the adab of the Quran and find a place where you're going to be, you know, sitting to recite your Quran together. So the next question is, how do I teach Quran to my child? As we mentioned before, listening or hearing the Quran is really vital. So if you have decided to teach your child now and the age three or age four, whatever age they are, hearing the Quran is just as important before actually getting into teaching them. So we've said some of the learning styles are, so your children might be visual learners, they might need to be moving while learning or repeating or reciting the Quran. They might need actions or some signs to help them remember for listening, uh, we use apps. So I've got one on my iPhone called My Quran, which I highly recommend. It's a, I will leave the links uh, related later. And we also use this uh, YouTube video. Uh, the reason I like this video um, mainly is because the, the Qari is reciting and then there's children reciting after him. And it just, it really encourages the kids to do the same. So they listen to him reciting and then they repeat after. Today's session, we're going to focus on Surah Fil to give you examples of how we would, how we did teach it actually. So how we taught this previously. Uh, we started by looking at this really amazing book called The Story of the Elephant. The children really enjoyed reading this book together and one of the main reasons is actually a really nice pop-up book and it gives a lovely background on the story behind Surah Fil, uh, so it helps them when it comes to memorising. After that, we took the pictures from the story and merged them with the ayahs from the surah so they could see the order of the story and how the surah follows suit. And that way they were able to remember what happened whilst they were memorising as well. For teaching purposes, we also uh, made this activity where the children have to pat match the pictures and it also helps us break down the ayah for them so we'll be sort of reciting the first part with them and then showing them how the pictures connect. Repetition. Now this is really, really important. This is one of the ways in which your child would memorize. But how to make it more fun and creative is what we're going to show you now. So Mari is going to demonstrate with me. She's going to uh, practice Surah Quraysh. So do you want to say Bismillah? Bismillah. 
Very good. Can you say it again? So you get the idea of the repetition. At this point, what we would do is, because we recited the first and the second ayah of Surah Quraysh, we would go back and repeat the first and the second ayah together. And we wouldn't do this on the same day, we'd probably do it on the next day or a day later. So here we've used numbers and stars as a method to repeat, and you can use cubes, you can get them moving, have them stand up and move forward in steps, or you can use a sticker chart and have them, you know, stick a sticker every time they've repeated the ayah. Other ways to uh, get your children repeating and reciting the Qur'an is through the listening apps that I mentioned before, My Qur'an, and that was on uh, iPhone. I don't, uh, listening to and watching the YouTube videos I mentioned earlier, which um, was, it's, on a, it's on a, called Umm al Qura channel, I think. I can send all the links later. And then also if you get them recording themselves and listening back to themselves reciting. Another question that's important to ask is how often should I teach uh, them? So how often should I teach Quran to my children? Uh, now remember, your children are children. They won't have that attention span that you want them to. From my own experience of teaching Quran to my children, I found that establishing a routine is really, really important. For us, what works best is just uh, starting early in the morning, straight after breakfast. We sit down uh, and we get ready. We find that memorizing a little a day is more than enough. So uh, up to an ayah a day, sometimes obviously we have the days where we're repeating two of the ayahs we learn. So we give ourselves 10 to 15 minutes and then we uh, have enough time to do that and we finish. The most important thing to remember is there's no rush. There's no rush that your child needs to have memorized a certain number of surahs by the age of like four or five and just go at the pace. And obviously this works for all areas of teaching and learning uh, of all subjects as well. For some surahs, we also uh, managed to make really cool crafts. So this is Surah Asr. And Amar is going to recite a little bit. Yeah. Off you go. Another point I needed to add is that you will need to recap over the old surahs that they've already memorized. So say, for example, they're memorizing Surah Kafirun. Um, that's their new surah. But they need to go back and probably memorize Surah Nas and Surah Falaq, and Surah Ikhlas, and Surah Masad, and Nasr, whichever ones they've basically learned. Um, and what we do is we tend to do this in the car, where we're going, you know, traveling around somewhere in the city, or uh, they sometimes do this before bedtime. So that's another time that we just have it in our routine. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how we recap the old surahs, or muraja'ah for those who know the terminology, just revision of the older surahs. The next question really is, is which order should my children memorize in? This was pretty much our order. The children first started uh, by memorizing Surah Fatiha. I think it's because it's something they hear so often in the masjid and in their toys and in those other sort of gadgets I showed you earlier. We then actually moved on to Surah Ikhlas, um, which is obviously a lot easier, and Surah Nas and Falak. I'm pretty sure it was like that, pretty much that order, those three. And then I remember we did follow on with the shorter surahs, like Surah Qawthar and Surah Asr. And then after that Surah Feel, like the one where we just showed you in the example, because our children were so young then, we used a lot of the visuals, as you saw, and then Surah Quraysh. The last thing left to discuss is how to encourage your children with Quran memorization. So once you've sort of got them started into the habit of memorizing, how do you keep that momentum going? Here's what we do. So some of the things we do is we have like the sticker chart. So this is the one that I'm showing now. Um, we sort of stopped using it. I, th I think there's a few stickers missing on some of these and they kind of pull off. But we laminated uh, uh, a HIFS chart like this. And that sticker chart sort of got replaced by this uh, visual chart, which was on a space theme. And I think I've shared this before. Are you ready to launch another rocket? So the rockets have the surah names on and the ones that Amara's memorized quite well. So this helps. 
so this helps with Moraja and more and um, she has to really know these surahs inside out for those rockets to get on here and so yeah it, it encourages her and it keeps her going and she's really eager to get more rockets up into this galaxy and of course there's a juz amma tree that you can try as well uh, which I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure the Muslim sticker company sells, which I've been meaning to get, so hopefully I'll get around to buying this summer. And we also gave out certificates as a way to encourage them to memorise some more, and we'd bake cupcakes or make brownies that day as a special treat for them, which they really enjoyed. So I'd, you know, make a big deal out of what they memorise. I also recently started up this little Quran memorisation record, a bit like a reading record, which I've shared as well numerous times. And it just gives me an idea of how much or how often we're actually memorizing. So I'll just show you the inside. And last but not least, throw them a party. Um, Amara went to um, a lovely friend's house whose children had memorized parts of the Quran. And since that day, she's absolutely like, Mama, I want a Quran party. It's such a fab way to encourage them and to get them excited and, and another thing I'd, I guess I'd suggest is if you can memorize with another uh, homeschooling family or friends to encourage your children along the way as well. I wanted to end on a really uh, personal note which is my own realization that subhanAllah we should be encouraging our children to memorize from such a young age and one of the reasons is they won't really get that access to the Quran until they're about five, six, seven, because that's when you'd send them to like a Quran school or you'd uh, you know, find a teacher for them to be able to read the Arabic and be able to read the letters and join the words. What I'm trying to say is don't wait until they're five or six to get them connected to the Quran. Start now, start when they're young, start when they're toddlers, babies. Because in essence, that's how we learn languages, isn't it? Through listening, through repeating, and then through actually saying. I think as Muslims we should have high hopes about memorization and I for one have been through this journey where I just always thought no it's so impossible for, to memorize how on earth could our child you know could our children memorize but really really don't let shaitan or other whispers hold you back um, personally I wish I'd known this I'm lucky that I got to know this just now that this is the way to um, start our children's connection with the Quran start through memorizing I hope this video has been useful and not too overwhelming for any of you. Start at your pace and go at your children's pace, but try, try. It's a really nice connection to build and you never know, it'll encourage you to learn and memorize as well along the way with your kids.